Contract Jack is the prequel to No One Lives Forever 2. Developed by Monolith Productions, released in 2003 and running on the LithTech engine. Whilst Contract Jack does have a few moments that are genuinely enjoyable, for the most part it's sadly a boring, repetitive shooting fest that strips away everything that made No One Lives Forever 2 good in the first place. Things start off well enough with a spectacular shootout as Jack blasts his way to freedom through endless waves of mobsters. Shortly after this, he's hired by Harms Dmitry Volkov, who most players will be familiar with from North 1 and North 2, and soon finds himself working for Harm as one of their agents. From that point, you just go from location to location, which all serve little purpose other than just being an interactive shooting gallery. There's very little variation in gameplay between levels, and most of them just consist of moving from area to area, shooting the same brain dead enemies over and over as they move towards you in a goddamn conga line. Occasionally they might shoot at you from an elevated position, retreat when injured, or throw the odd grenade. But most of the time they just beeline towards your muzzle flash like a moth to a flame, and it gets old real quick. You will literally kill hundreds of these guys over the course of the game's single player campaign, and each and every one of them are all stupid as shit, running through doorways blindly after seeing half a dozen of their comrades getting gunned down only moments earlier. It's just so bizarre considering that Nolf 2 had some really clever AI and it kind of ties in with what I was saying earlier about how the game is really devoid of everything that makes the series so great. Even in terms of humour, it's bone dry and I think I counted maybe two or three jokes during the entire campaign. Uh, actually it's uh, 7pm so uh, technically it ain't morning, per se. Shut your hole before I shovel dirt in it Marvin, it's a figure of speech. There's no intel to collect, no experience points to spend, no stealth sections, and there's barely any exploration at all. There's a couple of occasions where you actually have to activate something or find an item to progress, but usually the way to move things along is just by holding your finger down on the left mouse button, if you get my meaning. There's a couple of vehicle sections which are pretty fun despite being heavily scripted. These let you control a rocket launching snowmobile and a Vespa armed with machine guns but they're really brief and follow a very specific path. I was also disappointed that they didn't cross over many characters or environments from the Nolf games. I can remember seeing this game when it first came out and thinking it looked a lot like Half-Life Opposing Force. And I thought it might follow in that similar vein, you know, you'd keep running into Kate Archer or something like that, similar to how Shepard kept running into Gordon Freeman. But aside from a couple of wanted posters with Kate Archer's face on them, and a cameo from one of the main villains, it really doesn't have much to do with the other games at all, feeling completely removed from them entirely. Jack himself is a cardboard cutout of a protagonist. I mean, I'm not expecting a lengthy backstory or anything like that, but the guy really doesn't have any sort of emotion whatsoever. The only thing we know about him is that he's a hired gun, and that he did something to piss off a bunch of mobsters. That's about it. There just ain't a lot of room for professional hitmen like ourselves. So you're retiring early. If they could have at least given him a few one-liners or any semblance of a personality, it would have helped the game immensely. And yet I think I only had him say a single line the entire time. I mean, the guy barely grunts when he takes a buckshot to the face. He really is that boring. In the game's defense, it does do shooting quite well. I mean, the guns look and sound really cool. The Tommy gun in particular feels really meaty and there's some cool explosion and particle effects. The levels themselves are a little bit linear, but there is a lot of variety between them visually, and that all of the environments do stand apart as their own. Though it doesn't really change the fact that Contract Jack is pretty much just a total letdown, and doesn't even begin to come close to doing the franchise justice. It's probably only 2-3 to three hours in length on a first playthrough, and has a rushed, sloppy ending that feels like a total slap in the face. Combined with its very repetitive and uninspired campaign, I'd have lots of trouble recommending this game to anyone. Contract Jack is kind of sitting in copyright limbo at the moment, so there's no guilt to be had in downloading it for free if you can find a site that hosts it. Though you're definitely better off playing the other games, as they're ultimately much more satisfying.